Hello, my dears, welcome. Today, I'm gonna record a little video for all of the little blips of past lives that I've seen. And as I've mentioned before, I know that I'm choosing for this to be my last human life. I'm kind of rounding up all the different things and it brings my human incredible joy to know that once I've passed away from this world, that YouTube will have access to this and be able to share it with you across time and space. So when it comes to past lives, and I use the term past life for the quantum multidimensional view of what it is that I can see. In my normal view, I am you know, viewing the current matrix reality in front of me, and then my higher self and my guides show me an image over here, and then I usually have another image going on over here that, that is either a specific past life that's kind of mirroring the reality that I'm going through right now, and I can really thank my Atlantean self for everything that she chose to do in that lifetime. This is all in the playlist list um, with all of my past life tales. So I'll put the link for that below, but it's on my page definitely. So when it comes to this multidimensional quantum world that we're in, seeing all of this means that we're healing it, meanings, means that we're ready to view it. We can only meet ourselves where we're at. For example, you know, sometimes tarot, once you start using it, becomes a little bit archaic. And why would I ask the cards, pictures, you know, I've always said, and I really like the phrasing of like reading the tarot is like reading the paper. It's, you know, when you sink into meditation or when you do a lot of quantum work, when you do a lot of, you know, personal growth and development work, leadership tools and different things like that, you don't really need the 101 anymore, but it's good to have. So kind of when I'm waking up in the morning and it's a very accessible tool for many of my clients to be able to utilize I have uh, when it comes to tarot and things like that, but I'm getting ahead of myself. So the blips. These are little bits of views that I've seen where I don't have to have the entire experience in a full quantum view of the lifetime. I don't have to experience a reality of that in this human form or a parallel to it, kind of like this view over here. But I know that the more I heal, the less access to any of this I'm going to have. So even I can go back and watch some of these after I've processed them and healed them. So I've been talking about the blips for a little while. So I'm going to, okay, let's deep dive right in. So this was a view that, you know, a few years ago when after COVID time, I found out that I could sing. And so I would sing, you know, at the uh, friends' birthday parties and different things like that. And after I had done a performance, it was a dear friends going away party. I had someone that had channeled a past life of mine where I was a speakeasy singer. And this kind of has to do with a few, I'm going to kind of like roll with them, where I was a speakeasy singer. And it was something that, you know, in that lifetime, I was, you know, single because I felt more comfortable I was I was happy with kind of like all the men that would come to my show and I would but um and after you know those speakeasy was shut down I kind of lost a significant amount of my identity and I recognized that I was maybe I was a drinker in that lifetime and I was much older than I thought it's kind of when you finish your substances and you come out of your addictive patterns and after you rehabilitate or detox you kind of recognize that you've been living the same day over and over and that you're older than you thought that you were or you know when you get stuck in your adolescence and then you're like having the telling the same story well into your 30s 40s and 50s it's like yeah, you know, high school was great and amazing. We had some really great times. But if you're still making those same jokes and acting in that same emotional maturity level, you're not. At, you're going to age, but not grow up. And so, in that lifetime, once you know my voice was taken away and my stage was taken away, I didn't know who I was. I didn't know who I was. And what's interesting is, as soon as I, I just have to say that as soon as I start talking and record some of these like my nun past life is coming to me and like all of these different they're like all sitting at the table so just like to be I just love life so much and I love being quantum and I just love the work that I get to do and it's just like I'm so grateful I'm so so grateful it's just so cool to to be here and to share this information with you none of this is just meant for me so I'm here if I can ever be helpful if you're keen for a one-on-one -on -one session please just my email address is always below in the description so the speakeasy singer, I only saw a bit of that because the more I, you know, just the other day, I've, I've shared that I'm not smoking cannabis anymore. I ingest in tinctures and in butters, but the smoking I stopped, I left in 2023. is one of the most important things that I left in 2023. And 
you know, I kind of got mad at myself. I wasn't singing in January 2024. And my throat was getting scratchy. It was hurting. And so the other day, I think it was, I'm recording this on Friday. It was like Wednesday night or something. I sang for the first time in a long time. And I just didn't record it. I didn't care. I, you know, I was just singing for the joy of singing. You know, it's what my tattoo on my chest means. In every moment, enjoy the joy of living. And so I was laughing and singing and, you know, going from Joe Cocker to Italian opera and to Sade and to Whitney Houston and Minnie the Moocher. And it's just, it just didn't matter. It didn't matter. It just brought joy. And so I don't have the full view of this past life, my higher self is telling me right now, because that's, it has yet to come. It is yet to come. And singing brings me joy. So I'll share, uh, there's, I'll share a little bit soon, probably on Instagram. Let's say, okay, that's the speakeasy. Um, Human love, human love. And it was a few years ago that I had kind of in a, a moment of despair had asked my higher self, did I ever just experience human love? Did I ever? And, you know, at this point, I'm falling in love with myself more and more. So when I do or if I do meet my king, it'll just be amazing. It will not change or define who I am. But in that moment, I was quite lonely and really sad. And I asked, have I ever experienced just human love? And I did. It was in Paris. And um, I would always just see the Eiffel Tower. I just lived in town. And I, you know, nothing of Paris. I know nothing of the French language, nothing at all. And all I remember is just, you know, being at home and cooking food together and dancing with a record player on and just laying on the couch holding each other. It was a very simple life. And I don't know if we had children or maybe we miscarried a bunch of times. I I don't know. And, um, you know, human fights and human differences and human issues and just a very simple human life. And there was uh, a man that I had spent some time with and I, he was not in any way, did not speak this language. And there was one night that we were just, you know, holding each other and he goes I just got a like a view of the Eiffel Tower and it was so he, like he doesn't speak this language at all at all there's a time that I was channeling a past life of ours together and I was like do you want this version of you to give you the messages and he was like absolutely not I it just it freaked him out he believed in it but it freaked him out and so oh my god that was a whole nother past life where I was like <laughs> I'm just gonna go and roll with it and I was a queen without a king and it was I I needed a king so he I was married off and I was the one with the land and the wealth and the title and this person that was just of the right um, caliber I want to say was married over to me but did not have and was just sitting pretty he was like I could just get to be king and I had to sit there with my you know womanly self and be like oh Oh, sure. Yep. You take care. Yep. Do your thing. Do your thing. Uh, We did not have children in that lifetime. So I don't think in the human love did I have that. Um, (laughs) There's one where I was the bad guy and it's really gross and not, not fun for me to look at, but I have to share it with you because it I saw it and it was real. Um, this is going to get, I just want to time out, this is going to get like grody grody quick, so, or just inappropriate quick, and it kind of partly is over into my past life tales of sexual trauma, where this one was, I was a schoolgirl that had a big old crush on my teacher, and I think like it was like 50s-esque type of a time, 40s, 50s-esque time period and I had a huge crush on my teacher he was not interested in me he was like you're a child you're 14 years old absolutely not and I in that lifetime lied and said that we had an engagement that we had a you know an sexual encounter and I basically destroyed this entire man's life in that lifetime yeah when you're ready to look at your when this starts happening when you open up to your quantum views you have to look at yourself as the bad guy, the good guy, viewing it from above. So I you know, am healing so many of those different things in that lifetime, in this lifetime, pardon me. I'm just looking at my notes because there's two that I want to really talk about and um, 
I'm gonna end with the one that I just saw recently. So, so yeah, and I believe in that lifetime that I unalived myself. I'm pretty sure that I unalived myself um, out of shame and just would never, either I like wrote a note or did something that said that I had made it up, but I couldn't face anyone afterwards. I was so ashamed. So I know that I died young in that lifetime. Like I never got past like 16 years old. I'm having a reaction, body reaction to that. Maybe you get the chilly chills. You're just like, that's the right way. So I was the bad guy. I mentioned the brothel one before and it's something that I'm really, there's so much healing that I've done in that lifetime. And even within the last month, January 2024, I did a lot of healing with this lifetime where I was the oldest worker at the brothel. And, you know, people would come to me not just for you know the the you know what you go to the brothel for but it was during that time where it was also like um it was like a hotel like a like a little inn if you will and um you know i felt a sense of duty for the younger gals and i was helpful to them and you know i had an unrequited love with the owner of the brothel of the inn and there was there was, um, it ended in a fire, basically, that the whole place caught on fire. I don't know how in any, I don't know what the intention was where, I'm seeing it now, hold on. Very religious people came and just burned it down. They were upset over the brothel. I've never seen that before, that's interesting. And basically, I kind of, like, um, what's the movie? The Ellen Glasta, the perfect storm, you know, in the movie where George Clooney kind of like looks up and then goes back in again. I, you know, opened the door and I, and I saw that the place was smoking and on fire and I just closed the door and I titanic myself and I just laid down and I was like, I'm, I'm good, I'm good, I'm good. So that's that. Um, the last one is something that I find to be very quantum. So I'm gonna do my best to put this into a very, accessible way um, it kind of the moral of the story is when you change yourself that helps you but you can't change the people around you what what destiny happens is what will happen you just have to make sure that you are of the hot, the mindset and and of the space to heal it and so i was in a very powerful sound bowl healing last week and this is one of probably like six or seven different views different healing imagery that i processed in that hour time um, it was really amazing and really cool so the view that i had was and again this is going to get violent quick so i'm just i'd just like to give you that time to check in and just be like if you don't want to process you know with me with sarah dying again then then don't watch this video just scroll past my face that's okie dokie with this one, it was during more pilgrim time and it was very connected to Yeshua, to Jesus. And so pilgrim time, I was a healer in that time and had opened some version of a healer. I was giving healings out of my home. I was doing things that the townspeople had deemed to be very inappropriate and it was very much... Um, I don't like how many times I'm saying um, so I apologize about that. I'm trying to process with you as I'm seeing three different universes at the same time. So actually, I'm going to give myself grace. I can um because of it's, it's a lot of at the same time. So to give the, the parable of Yeshua, you know, I had a very call to Jesus moment last weekend with Uranus going direct. I really came back to my center as far as being very connected to that divine masculine being. And so in this pilgrim lifetime i was working out of my home and you know utilizing my capabilities because i had them and they're not just for me i can't sit at home and just quantum heal myself at all times and not tell anybody about it that would be extremely selfish and self-centered and honest to goodness fear-based you know our ancestors didn't die for us to be able to do a lot of our healing capabilities and have these quantum views and access to this information we must share it we must share it, especially in the North Shore of Massachusetts. We must share it. And so what I saw in this healing during this lifetime was the townspeople were very angry that I was calling myself a healer. They were saying Yeshua, Jesus, was the only healer. 
was the only healer and it was connected to some personal traumas that I've had and I'll leave just if you're interested in those the waking up post woke series there's a whole playlist for that and a lot of this has to do with some adult sexualization that I went through and um, someone that had you know it's it's I don't identify with it but something that had happened to me someone had said drunkenly like oh you're a healer who have you healed and, and was very, um, that imprinted on me. And so in this lifetime, in this view now, I'm gonna go back to the pilgrim time, the townspeople were saying, Jesus is the only healer. Jesus is the only one that can do these types of things. You are, a, you know, false profiting. You are not allowed to do this. It is not, it is, this is, it was very much so that they all banded together to kill me. And so what happened was, uh, the blip that I remember of this was I'm standing in the middle of an angry sea of townspeople and they didn't have um, like pitchforks. It wasn't like three pronged, it was just one pronged. And for some reason that's poignant, I'm having a full body reaction. It's just like, it was just a very long pole that they were stabbing me with. And so I was in this circle and this is gonna get quantum because it happened twice because I experienced one view, I came back, sat with myself, healed a certain aspect of myself, chose to go back to that view, change my experience and reaction to it so that I could heal, like I healed this lifetime and now I won't have access to it anymore. And so that's why I'm sharing it with you here. So just wanted to Tarantino it for you and now we're going to go back so i experienced a view of me in the center getting stabbed over and over and over and so i had stab wounds literally all over my body i'm bleeding from every little area they you know mockingly hit my palms and my feet and very you know being nailed to the cross type of a way and they were yelling at me and saying you you know you're no healer. Who have you healed? You can't do this. You're not Jesus. You're not this. And so I'm experiencing this in the sound bowl healing. And as I'm watching this version of me who's so angry because all I wanted to do was help and all I wanted to do is heal. And this one specific person that was there in that past life, the one who had said to me in this human life, who you're not a healer. Who have you healed? I looked directly at her in the first view and I go, do it, I dare you, like kill me, saying, do it, I dare you, I'll come back and haunt you. And as soon as I said it, the whole thing, Zach Morris, the whole thing just stopped. And I just said, ew, that is not me. That is not, sorry, I'm clicking my pen. I have four pens on the table right now, I'm obsessed. And um, I was like, ew, that's not me. I would never do that, I would never say that. I would never do that. And so I came back to myself and I came back to myself and my higher self and Yeshua and we sat in meditation and I just said, God, please forgive me. I really, like that really didn't resonate. That really feels so gross. Please forgive me. I would never haunt someone. I would never want to participate with them in that capacity. I would never. That feels so out of alignment. It feels so icky and gross. And I would really love to heal this immediately. Help me heal this. What do I do? And so I sat with Yeshua, I sat with God, I sat with my higher self and my future self and all the versions of me, like literally all of the quantum versions of me came together and we processed and we healed. This was happening instantaneously, like literally, it was just so beautiful and powerful. And I said, I really would like to, give me a mulligan, I wanna heal that. And I'm ready to release this lifetime. I'm ready to release that pain. I don't need to prove to anyone my capabilities. I don't need to prove to anyone. I'm getting emotional. I don't need to prove to anyone my view, what I can do. Everyone has access to infinite information, their clairs, their healing technology, whatever it may be. This, I, that is not me. I don't need to wear that egoic mask anymore. I don't have to prove to anyone, even in post, post life. I don't have to. I like, like, take me out, I'll race my YouTube, I don't care. I don't care. Like, I don't need the accolades, it's fine. And so I went back to that lifetime with all of my team, with everyone around me, and it was so special where every single time I was poked and stabbed, I just said, I forgive you. I forgive you. I forgive you. Those literally only words that would come out of my mouth. And what I found is that that 
enraged them more. They're like, only Jesus can forgive. Only God forgives. You can't even forgive. You're not allowed to do that. Who told you you could do that? And they kept yelling at me and yelling at me and yelling at me to the point of, I just said, I forgive you. And then she, she you know, ended my life in that lifetime. And so the moral of the story is you can go back and heal your traumas. You can go back and heal the things about yourself that you do not like. When you heal it now and you heal it then, you heal your future. It's all quantum. It is all quantum. But we cannot change the destiny of others. We cannot change the way that they are going to participate in this world. The only control that you have is your own. They're going to demonize you. They're going to laugh at you. Truly, I had people commenting on my waking up post-woke video being like, I don't buy it. Like, what, you don't buy my life? You don't buy that I'm sharing this for a, an appropriate purpose, whatever it may be? That's fine. It's my reaction to it. I forgive them. I'm grateful for them. Please watch the YouTube. I'm working towards partnership and monetization on my YouTube. So any like, any dislike, it's all the same. It's something that we all know, which is whether when you're of the light and when you're doing work in this world as a, a sovereign being, you will trigger the light inside of someone or their darkness. Either way, it's the same thing. Either, either way, you're teaching. Either way, you're planting seeds. I don't know if I wrote stabby. That was the... And that was last week. And that was in a healing. That was one little blip of processing and healing. And so the more you ground, the more you'll be able to do this. The more you ground and meditate and understand the voices that are coming to you, who they are, because they are not all yours. Not all voice is yours to listen to. Not all thoughts, not all emotions do you need to attach yourself to. But when something comes in like that, it feels like this, like it's a cloudy day and the sun is shining for a moment. Thank you for being here. I love you so much. I'll see you soon.